What's up, friends? Good morning to you. Happy Good Friday to you. I'm actually recording this in the early morning of Good Friday 2021. I don't know if you can tell by that certain strain in my voice. You know how everyone has a morning voice? (laughs) You just wake up and your vocal cords are still trying to wake up as well. I literally woke up 10 minutes ago. The sky is still gray outside my window. And it is indeed Good Friday. And today's convo cast, it's not about me and a special guest. Indeed, you are the special guest. And this this episode is a callback to something I did last Good Friday, hard to believe now, a year ago, a year of a pandemic that simply will not die, continues to ravage the landscape and ravage human hearts the world over. This episode is you and the Lord on Good Friday because maybe it's me leaning a little extra hard or a lot extra hard into my foreness, into my darkness, but I see too many Christians, believers, Jesus followers letting today simply pass by. Focusing on Easter and all of the light, all of the joy, all of the exuberance, and those things are certainly valid, certainly things to be hoped for. But you cannot get to an empty tomb without first getting to an occupied cross. And my hope is that for the next 10 minutes and, and hopefully for the next several hours, that you don't let the weight of Good Friday escape you. Do you force yourself to, to walk through it, to consider it, to let it weigh you down? For myself personally, it's been a wretched year. It's been a year of a disease. It's been a year of a virus. It's been a year of temptation and sin, anxiety, and a lot of hopelessness, if I'm honest. And in many ways, this dichotomy of Good Friday and Easter, well, it, it kind of encapsulates what your other brothers is all about. Two sides to every story, to every good story. The struggle and the triumph, the darkness and the light. Yes, Easter is coming, and yes, Easter is glorious. But first, Good Friday. And so my hope is that as you listen to these words from the Gospel of John, that you let them stick with you, that you think about them for minutes and hours after you hear them. From sunrise to sunset, these words stick with you and point you to your future hope, to Easter Sunday. From the Gospel of John, chapter 19 reads as follows. Then Pilate took Jesus and flogged him, and the soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head and arrayed him in a purple robe. They came up to him saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and struck him with their hands. Pilate went out again and said to them, See, I am bringing him out to you, that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, 
and according to that law he ought to die, because he has made himself the Son of God. When Pilate heard this statement, he was even more afraid. He entered his headquarters again and said to Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. So Pilate said to him, You will not speak to me. Do you not know that I have authority to release you and authority to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no authority over me at all unless it had been given you from above. Therefore he who delivered me over to you has the greater sin. From then on, Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. So when Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat at a place called the Stone Pavement and in Aramaic, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about the sixth hour. He said to the Jews, Behold your king. They cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. So he delivered him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and he went out, bearing his own cross, to the place called the place of a skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote an inscription and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Aramaic, in Latin, and in Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but rather this man said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and divided them into four parts, one part for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture which says, They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did these things. But standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her to his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A jar full of sour wine stood there. So they put a sponge full of the sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. So as we all go through today, it's my hope, it's my prayer that those three words, the last three words we have from Jesus on a cross, it is finished, that they would build in a sort of crescendo as your day unfolds, as your weekend unfolds, that perhaps you have a new perspective on your year your struggles, your sin, that this Good Friday, maybe more than any other Good Friday, gives you a clearer picture of what exactly died on that cross 2,000 years ago. The worst things you've ever done, the worst things I've ever done. It is finished. It is finished. 
Much love, my brothers, my sisters. God go with you this Easter weekend, and we'll be back next week with with another podcast.